Hey, it's Holly Brink with EXP Realty. This is part seven of my home buying video series on appraisals. So let's talk about it. So if you're a cash buyer, you can just move on to the next video. Cash buyers don't have to get appraisals. Um, it's one reason why sellers like cash buyers so much because it doesn't matter what someone else thinks the home is worth. Whatever the cash buyer is willing to pay is whatever the cash buyer is willing to pay. However, when you get financing, any type of loan, if you get financing, the bank or the lender is going to order an appraisal. An appraiser is an unbiased third party who comes in and gives their opinion on the value of the home. So for easy math, let's just say you offer $125,000 on a house, an appraiser comes through and they say, yes, it's worth $125,000. Then you're good to go, we move forward to the next step. The appraiser comes in and says, eh, this house is worth about 110. Then we had to stop in our tracks and we have to renegotiate the contract because the bank, any bank or any lender is not gonna wanna lend you more money than the home is worth, which is why it's really important homes are priced right and your contract is priced right, unless you have a ton of money to cover the difference. So we call that an appraisal gap. So you're trying to buy the house for 125, the appraiser says it's worth 110, so you have an appraisal gap of $15,000. Couple of different ways this is handled. Sometimes buyers have the extra money, they knew that they overbid on the house because they really wanted to get it, they pay the difference, no problem. Sometimes the sellers are like, well, we're gonna have this problem with anybody if these buyers walk away, so we may as well just reduce our price and sell it. Great, you move forward. Sometimes buyers and sellers split the difference, so cat buyers will bring in whatever they can, 5,000, 7,500, 10,000, and then the seller reduces the purchase price to match that. Um, one interesting thing that I just found out was in some cases you can actually talk to your lender and the mortgage insurance that you're going to pay on your loan will cover the gap. So it's something to explore, look into if you're ever in this situation. Um, and then ultimately, worst case scenario, the appraisal comes back at 110, seller says no, we want 125, we're not budging, we're not moving, we're not working with you, you don't have any money to bring to the table, and the deal is dead. So then you gotta start back over home shopping. <laughs> so stay tuned for part eight, where we'll dive a little bit deeper into abstracting. If you have any questions, reach out to me, thinkhouses, thinkholly.com.